kindly remain standing for the scriptures. It's taken from the book of Acts, chapter 14, verses 8 to 20. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. In Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea and all things that are in them, who in bygone generation allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Father, we just want to thank you for this word. We ask, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, whatever you want to teach us today. And Lord, anoint my mouth as I speak. Kindly be seated. We are going to talk about the people of Lystra being fickle-minded. So I just want to ask you also today, are you fickle-minded like the people of Lystra? We're going to look into why we call them fickle-minded. Paul and Barnabas were in the leadership team in the flourishing church at Antioch. While the leadership were worshipping the Lord and fasting, one day the Holy Spirit spoke and asked for Paul and Barnabas to be set aside for the work that the Holy Spirit had for them. So they set sail on their first mission to the island of Cyprus. When they reached there, they went from city to city and every city they visited, they preached the gospel. They sailed north after that to Asia Minor modern-day Turkey, and again they preached and taught in every city they came to. They even planted churches all along the way. Wherever they went, they would always first go to the Jewish synagogue because they felt that the Jews would be the first to respond to the gospel. Why? They had been waiting for a long time for the Messiah. And they knew that this was the time when the Messiah was supposed to be around. But they did not find the response from the Jews. A few of them, yes, but it was mostly from the Gentiles. Let me tell you today that if you are not willing to listen to the word of God, not just being hearers, but doers as well, God will move to someone who is more receptive to the word of God. Because God did not send Jesus to die on the cross 
so that everything, once we are saved, everything comes to a standstill. In fact, we are told, go into all the world. If he says, go into all the world, it means we've got business to do. Whose business? Kingdom business. We've come to Kuwait, yes, to make some money. But if that's your primary focus, then there is something wrong. Because if we are going to think about what we wear, what we eat, what we drink, what is our bank balance, then the Great Commission has no meaning for us, though we say we are Christians. The Jews rejected the gospel. They became hostile towards Paul and Barnabas and began to make trouble. Let me tell you, wherever the kingdom of God goes forth, there are people who will make trouble. They don't like it. They don't want anyone else to like it. In spite of that, Paul and Barnabas continued the work until their presence created trouble for the new believers and then they would move to the next city. In this manner, Paul and Barnabas continued their journey to Perga, to Pisidian Antioch and Iconium. But when they came to Lystra, something unusual happened. And verses 8 to 10 tells us that there was a miracle. There was no synagogue in Lystra. A public forum would be held at the marketplace. There was a raised stand over there and a ch chair where the city magistrate would give judgments on both civil and criminal matters. Any time a Roman citizen had something to say to the people, he was permitted being a Roman citizen. He could stand on the steps and say whatever he had to say. Even the latest news to the people was given from that place. So, Paul being a Jew took advantage of it and he proclaimed the great news of salvation from this place. And as he spoke, he could see a man sitting in that crowd who was lame. We are told that he was lame since birth. He had not walked ever. But as Paul is speaking, his faith is rising. And when your faith is rising, I tell you, if you are in trouble or if you are in need of something, your miracle is on its way. Your miracle will come when you give your attention to the word of God. So this lame man is sitting there, may have been sitting in that square, begging over there. But even the difference it made to him was he was healed. Paul looked at him and says, saw from his countenance that he was now ready for a miracle. Let me ask you at any time, after you heard the word of God, or as you are hearing the word of God, or as you are praying, is a miracle on its way. Have you ever experienced that? Nobody? You ask for a miracle and it doesn't happen? It happens. How many times God wants to bless you, but we do not go to God first. We run to people. I tell you, leave everything and run to God. And you will see when you run to God, you are telling him there is no other person that can do it. I am looking on to you, my master, because only I, you are able to do it because you are the God of the impossible. Do you serve a God, a God of the impossible? Then... You should not be saying, I have a problem. Because when you are having a problem, you tell your problem, my God is bigger than you. God is able to give you your miracle if you are not fellowshipping with your problem. So stop fellowshipping with your problem. Since there was no synagogue in Lystra, Paul used this as a stand where he could talk. And as he spoke, he saw this man there. 
This man's faith goes on rising. I tell you, when the Holy Spirit touches you, and when you are ready for your miracle, there will be a change on your face. Why? Because what's in your heart can now be seen on your face. You are saying, Lord, I have, I trust you. And you reach that point when you accept that God is able to give you a breakthrough. As Paul saw his hope grow on his countenance and perceiving the time ready for him to be healed, he did just like what Peter did in Acts 3 to the lame man, he tells the guy, rise. Now the guy was lame. He could have thought, how can I rise? But we are told he rises up. And not only does he rise up, he is leaping and jumping. Imagine the first time he is walking. He is excited. And all of the people who had gathered there have seen this miracle. The word, the lame man, the, he knew something because he saw it. What did Paul see that informed him of the lame man's faith? It was his countenance. Faith in Jesus had transformed his countenance so that the hope shone on his face where it had not been before. If you go to a healing place where they have a healing ministry, you go without hope, you'll come out without hope. You ask somebody who goes for prayer because they are sick. We pray, we do everything. The next minute you ask them, how are you? I still have pain. Oh, how can you say that? We just prayed. Stand in the gap and say, it's gone in Jesus' name. Though I don't feel it now, I believe my God is working in the background. And I will be healed. I will receive my miracle. When you tell Satan, shut up, my God is in control, it will happen, you see your faith rises up. And when your faith rises up, let anything happen, let any of it, you feel any aches, and it will go. Everything has to bow down to the name of Jesus. You believe that? So your sickness, your problem, whatever, has to bow down. It doesn't say may bow down. It will bow down. So you as a Christian should have that much faith. If Jesus could walk on water, Jesus could make another man walk on water, that your miracle is just one word away. Are you saying yes to your miracle or you are saying not possible? Take the word, negative word should not come out from your mouth. Capture it before it comes out. By mistake it came out, say sorry to the Lord and go back saying the right things. If you don't know what to say, open your Bible where it calls all the healing scriptures are there in case you are sick and keep saying that over and over till the healing manifests. You got to do that. Nobody else can do it for you. I can pray for you. Yes, I can pray with you. But if you don't want to pray to your God, then me praying for you is makufaida. Okay? So if you want to see your miracle, start saying all the positive things that you know are found in the Holy Bible. So, we see in Acts 11, when Barnabas visited Antioch, to check on the revival there, he saw the grace of God at work among the people, the presence and the power of the Spirit to transform lost sinners into saved children of God was so real it could be seen on the people's faces. He could tell that the believers were ready to come to the faith because of what expression he saw on their face. So as Christians, we are children of Almighty God if we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, which also means you are a citizen of heaven. So make sure you say the right words 
it has to change our identity when anyone looks at us they should say there is something in them that we know that they are christian it should not rob you of your joy your faith it should show everyone that you have joy you have hope you know where you are going you know where you are headed do you know where you are headed if you know where you are headed let's have the bright smile on the face so that when others see it they say yes something is here we know that if god is for us nobody can be against us have you been to a movie at any time if you are waiting outside to get in when you see the people come out the expression on their face you can tell from that expression on their countenance that whether the movie was good you're going in to get your run for the money or you're just going to be bored and come out hello how many of you have been to a movie okay so you've been to a movie and you see the expression of those coming out you know it wasn't good okay so what does your countenance say about your faith remember god loves you whatever you did in the past he will forgive you if you will ask for forgiveness and continue he doesn't want you to carry yesterday's burden today because his mercies are new every morning do you know that so when you go to bed make up with god get up in the morning his mercies are new it's a fresh leaf you don't have to carry yesterday's burden you just got to say lord it's a brand new day you wake you woke me up thank you so many people died today lord i am healthy today thank you i have a job thank you i have food on the table thank you so how many thank yous you can say you know if god is for you nobody can be against you amen, amen. verses 11 to 12 tells us they start naming paul and barnabas after their greek gods barnabas was of a slightly larger stature so they called him zeus head of the gods and paul hermes because he was the chief speaker zeus and hermes also were known as jupiter and mercury the two popular gods of the romans according to the legend these gods had once visited their city and no one offered them any hospitality except an old couple so zeus and hermes killed the rest of the people and rewarded this old couple so when the citizens of lystra saw the miracle that was performed by paul and barnabas they thought that the gods were revisiting them and remembered that because they were not hospitable to them when in their on their first visit and they destroyed everyone they quickly want to make sure that they honor paul and barnabas but the truth is miracles are not reflective of the person performing it miracle shows that there is a god behind that miracle it points you to god these it's showing them that there is a miracle these were jews and they still could not comprehend that it is not the greek god that did it it was the holy god of israel amen, amen? so in verse 13 they get ready to sacrifice with the multitudes when the lishan saw this healing they correctly identified that it was the hand of god but they it attributed it to a wrong deity they didn't want to incur divine displeasure like the older citizens had what had happened to them and so they want to pay homage to barnabas and paul and as soon as the high priest or the priest at that time heard it that the gods were visiting he did his priestly job gathered up sacrifices and offering and headed to town 
On the other side, the people were asking Paul and Barnabas to come to the temple. So the two groups meet at the temple to sacrifice with the multitudes. Imagine if you have a priest who doesn't understand who God is, who doesn't understand this Greek God is not the holy God of Israel. Now what can you tell the people? Remember, that's why they say you should not be too quick to teach. Because you will have to pay whatever I say from you. If you go and follow that, and if you do wrong because I said wrong, I will be held responsible not only for saying it, but for your wrong also. So that's why when you get into groups for Bible study, for anything, make sure if you are leading that time of prayer that you know first of all the word of God before you lead anyone else. Because whatever you say, they will follow. Make sure your word is solid when you go to teach somebody. The next we see in verses 14 to 18, idolatry at Lystra. It was unthinkable to the apostles that these guys should think of them as gods. They were human beings like them. To prove this, they tore their clothes. They were frustrated because they were crowd must have been so much. And everyone is saying, oh, we got to sacrifice to these guys. Now think for a moment how tempting it would be if somebody comes to you and you have, uh, have given the word, they come and fall at your feet, they want to worship you. Think about these two guys. They've been sent out from Iconium and Antioch. They've been chased out literally. And here in Lystra, these people want to worship them. So, do you want to take that and say, yes, I did a great job. I tell you, I cannot do a great job without the help of the Holy Spirit. So if I do a great job, it's because the Holy Spirit is working through me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about any one of us. It's all about the Holy Spirit. Now, when you say thank you to the Holy Spirit for the work that he is doing, you will find that he will use people, he will choose people who are close to his heart, just as he said, keep aside for me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have called them. And how did that happen? By prayer and fasting. You cannot say, I chose this one, I chose that one, I did this, I did that. Because we will make mistakes. But when the Holy Spirit leads, he knows exactly where to take you. So, always, when you are doing some major job, ask for the Holy Spirit help. Don't run with your own strength. Run with the help of the Holy Spirit and you will see great things happening in your life. Amen. Now, Consider how Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. He was, she was told by Satan that if she eats it, she'll become like God. Do you want to become like God? No, I'd like to be under God. Why? Because he is God. And I'm not. I'm man. When we understand that, hats off. Because you know, you'll give respect. You need to give respect, not only to elders, you need to give respect to our God. Why? Because he loves you. He has a plan for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So responding to the people of Lystra, Paul and Barnabas reminded them that God never leaves himself without testimony. If you say, how do I know there is a God? If you will just go outside, if you see the number of plants there, trees there, all of it different, you know there is a God. You go to the seashore and when you see all of the different fishes that are got, have you seen the underworld? Oh, it's fascinating. All of the animals, 
if you see the sun the moon the stars you know that there is a god who created that well you better know that there is a god if you say you don't know the bible fine but when you look outside you definitely know this is the hand of some god in it even think of the skyscraper god has given wisdom to somebody to build it otherwise the minute it stands up it will collapse god is a good god when we look to god he is able to guide us so never look anywhere else just look to god romans 120 says for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and godhead so that there are they are without excuse nobody can say i didn't know that god existed okay when in doubt just look around you will remember that there is a god but even after saying all of these things to them they could not restrain them from sacrificing to them verse 19 tells us they stoned paul verse 18 says they were willing to worship them willing to sacrifice to them and verse 19 they want to stone him why because some people from iconium and antioch followed him and told these people at lystra something bad about them so a person who was yesterday they wanted today they don't want i tell you don't look to people people will raise you up today they drop you like a hot potato the next day but god never does that to us look to god then supposing that he is dead they drag him out of the city finished we think he's gone for good verse 20 he escapes to derby now all not all the listrens were there stoning him some of them were led to the faith and so when his body is there lying outside the city they go and stand near the body verse 20 is amazing who were these disciples who were standing there and what were they doing these were the people of listra who were new converts let me tell you when you are a new convert you are on fire for god somewhere along the line you become cold you know why you're too confident you think you don't need to pray you don't want to trouble yourself and then what happens you become lukewarm please raise that fire in you so that you'd want to speak to god daily and that fire which is in you is stirred up all the time so that if anyone comes to you for prayer at any time you can just say a prayer for them with them so these were the citizens who were converts the prayer of faith can do mighty things and the effective fervent prayer of one whom god declares righteous avails much God had him finish with Paul. He wanted him still to continue preaching the gospel to the other nations and he want because of that if God hasn't done with you he will go on stirring you up. I tell you when even though when I was in the church coming from at 6:30 in the morning on a Friday when I wasn't working here and was going home at 8:30 in spite of that god took or told me during praise and worship one day i am calling you you are not coming i said lord all day i am here well whole day you being here is not is what he is not what he is interested in he had something he told me get equipped and i told him i you know lord i don't have money you see we give excuses and then he didn't talk but in faith i went and i tell you that faith is why i am here today god is able to lift you he only says one sentence to you or he speaks through someone be attentive you can be attentive only when you are connected to the word of god 
and you pray daily do it my friend you will see your life changes your family life will change everything will happen if you are connected to god please be connected to god the most important thing is not how people treat us let me tell you there are many people who insult us not that everyone will say oh you are good pastor but that does not mean that because they say that we give up our work our work is to preach the word some will like it some will not like it ultimately what we are interested in or i am interested in is when i stand before god that god will say well done good and faithful servant don't think everyone is for you people will be against you but god will never be against you he will always have something good for you why he loves you man is fickle so we see that when this happened they left for derby the next day man is fickle let me tell you don't miss the incredible irony in this story verse 18 the apostles are barely able to restrain the crowd from worshiping them in the next verse they stone them talk about fickle the lystrians were that they see a miracle and they are willing to worship them one minute and hearing manipulative tricky words from someone the next day they are willing to stone them they thought they should get rid of him and that's why they did it most of the people in the world are like the lystrians sin has twisted our thinking we cannot think straight about spiritual things morally man is messed up you know he does brilliant things with concern regards to science technology physics chemistry going to the moon talking about what predicting the weather but when it comes to the realm of the spirit man is like a babe in the woods knowledge does not equal wisdom man possesses knowledge to create a nuclear bomb but not the wisdom not to create it fallen mind man is contradictory one minute is hallelujah praise the lord second minute with the same mouth we curse somebody who's made in god's image how can both that come out of your mouth it has to be either pure water or it has to be stagnant water polluted water so what is your mouth bringing out you know the reason why that happened was because somebody was gossiping at the back so that's why these people were against paul can you tell me between a verse 18 and verse 19 what crime did paul and barnabas do nothing they are going about doing their business but the people are upset because they heard from the people who had come from iconium and antioch when people approve of you you feel good i tell you just leave that don't go by what people say go by what god says john 2:24 and 25 says but jesus did not covet himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man see god created us he knows what's inside of our heart sometimes we are oh we are praising when we are in the church when we go outside oh you cannot grumble at all times if you know god is for you whatever you are going through just leave that person just leave that thing in god's hand god will deal with it but make sure you are on the right track put your trust in god alone he is the only one who can solve your problem so don't trust anyone else except god james 4:4 says do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with god whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world must make himself makes himself an enemy of god and 1 john 2:15 says do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world 
The love of the father is not in him. Why is that so? You may say, I love the father. You cannot love the father whom you've not seen if you don't love somebody who you can see here. Well, not everyone you can love. But there is something like, I bless them. He says, bless your enemies, right? You think someone is against you? Don't talk about them, just bless them. And you will see the change come. Not only, first it will come in you, and then it will come in them. Why? Because you are always blessing. Another thing the Lystrians teach us is that we become the thing we worship. Are you worshipping your money? Are you worshipping your son and do or daughter? Are you worshipping your husband or wife? Are you uh, worshipping your bank balance? Are you worshipping your job? Leave everything out. Anything that comes between God and you is an idol. Drop it all off. Worship the Lord your God and you will see great things happen. Lord warns us in Exodus 23 2. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil. Because the whole crowd is going, you don't have to feel that you are part of the crowd. Remember, if the crowd goes down, you will go down with them. But you do what pleases God. Romans 12, 2. Do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Wherever is the renewing coming? In your mind. So capture that thought with the word of God. <coughs> Turn to the living God. One day, you know, when Jesus, they were going to crucify. <coughs> he was coming. They were saying, Hosanna to the king. Hosanna to the son of David. Next day, they stood together and said, Crucify him. Crucify him. These are the people. God never changes. Many faithful servants of God have suffered this kind of attack. But God has a way of overcoming the devil. Notice Paul and Barnabas, in the midst of all that they were doing, he stoned to death. They think he is dead, but he gets up, goes back to the same place that he came from, and goes and starts preaching the gospel. So if you're going through hardship, don't give up. Chase the evil one away. <clears throat> so let's look how the gospel messengers fell from praise to persecution. They saw the miracle but never heard the word. Verse 11. The people saw without hearing. Paul finished preaching a powerful message. And this lame man, faith has risen. What about the other people in the crowd? There are people who are there, maybe, I said Paul gave a grand sermon. There were there people who were worried, how soon will he finish, so that they could go about their business. I tell you, when you go to the house of God, go with a heart to hear what he has to say to you. Come early. Relax. Don't come later and be a distraction to yourself and to others. When you come early, you join in the praise and the worship. You come into the presence of God. You can hear the word of God that he wants to speak to you. Keep your mobile phones off. You have to Quieten your spirit. What does God say? Be still and know that I am God. If you are, when I can go, what can I do? You cannot hear from God. If you go to church for the sake of going, you may meet only your friends. But if you go and say, I want to go to church today to be blessed, you will be blessed. So it's all up to you. What do you want to do? Remember when you, the word does not sink into you, you make bad decisions like those guys at Lystra. 
They said he is a Greek god. How can you say you are? A, it's a Greek god. You cannot sit here and say I heard the word. Maybe Pastor Ivet said something about a Hindu god, about some other god. We're talking about the Holy One of Israel and none other. They chose to make them earthly gods, gods of Greek origin. They also failed to realize that this miracle which was done was not through them, but from God through them. We, they were just the instruments. Then the people praises turn into persecution. We have to see here how our troubled past follows us. Paul and Barnabas had a very great time of preaching in Iconium and in Antioch. And here the people have followed them. I tell you, your past never leaves you. They follow them there just to stir up trouble. Trouble comes from the so-called devout Jews. Trouble comes in any church from inside, not from outside. People who, in, who are inside and think they are devout Christian. I tell you, if you are a devout Christian, you will be scared to say, utter anything which you know you will be held responsible for. Maybe not by the people, but by God. So be very careful what you say. They persuaded these guys to stone him. I tell you, if God has some work to be done in the church, to be done in your life, anyone will put up, come in the middle and say no. But if God has not yet finished with you or with his church, he will not let anything go wrong. They stopped them from doing it there, but the Lord led them elsewhere. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And till he's done with that, he will never leave you. Obstacles will come. People will interfere. God will take you from there and put you somewhere else because he doesn't want his work to be stopped. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, because of that, God didn't finish with Paul. He had to, to write 13 New Testament books for us, right? And how could he do that? And he was the one who formed the foundation of the New Testament church. His life did not end because he was stoned. There may be many people who will stop what God is wanting to do. But if God has not finished it yet, he will shake anyone. And if you stop his work, you will roll also into troubles. So I tell you, just remember this one word. Nevertheless, they were stoned. They thought he's dead. Remember this one word, nevertheless. And I want you to remember this word, nevertheless. Nevertheless, stand on the ministry God has called you. Nevertheless, stay true to the word of God. Even if you have to walk alone. Nevertheless, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Forget opposition. Just say, nevertheless, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Amen? Amen. Because no matter what anyone says, what anyone does, God wants everyone to be saved. And he wants to use you. He wants you to do your part so that people will be one for him. You may not be in a position to speak, but I tell you, if you will ask him, he will just make a way maybe to start with your family first, to start with someone you know in your workplace. He can do it. Just pray. Just talk to him. Do his business. We are here to do kingdom business and nothing else. Amen? So let's stand. I want to pray with you. If you want to be doing kingdom's business, just say, Lord, I am available. Are you available? Are you available? Amen. Amen. Father, we just come into your holy presence today. 
We just want to thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the commitment of Paul. Though he was stoned, though they thought he was dead, we can imagine the bruises he had on him. And when the people prayed, Lord, he just got up and went. He did not say, oh, ouch. He just got up and we are told that he went in to continue to do the work that he had to do. That is passion, Lord, for the work that you had given him. Lord, we ask that you will give us the same passion to do the work that you have called us, each one of us. Lord, we just want to say, use us mightily for kingdom purpose. Don't take your hands away from us. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. We submit ourselves into your hand. We want to do only things that are pleasing to you, Lord. Lord, show us how you can use us. Help us to have that passion to reach out to those who are in need. Not physical need or monetary need, but those who are in need to be one for the kingdom of God. Master, we just want to love you today, love you with a passion, love what you want us to do with a passion and reach out to those who are in need. We give you all the praise, Lord, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen.